This is a mask used by the Timni of Tonkulili in the centre of Sierra Leone. It's called Arong Atoma, which means literally the mask of the Toma or the Toma mask. And there is a, a Toma society uh, which, which is part of the, the, the Timni Ragbenli society. So this is a mask associated in particular with this Timni society, Rangbenli. And um, it's called Aroma Toma because it's a mask of the, of the Toma within Rangbenli. Uh, you will see that it's, um, it has large nostrils. If you see it from the front, then your impression is that you're looking at the eyes because of these roundels which are carved in the nostrils. It's carved flat um, and then the roundels are, are carved around it. So if you, if you were to come upon it just looking straight at it, your initial impression would be that you were looking at a mask with huge uh, white and blue eyes. Um, however, if you look at the mask all round, then what you discover is that it has a domed forehead, it has horns which carve around the, the forehead or the dome, and it has projected forward, it has these large flaring nostrils, and underneath you can see teeth. So it is a mask which displays animal characteristics of savage teeth, flaring nostrils, horns, and a head which is long rather than upright. The mask is worn flat on the head with a raffia cloak projecting round about it. The person who wears the mask also wears a raffia costume involving uh, an upper cloak of raffia, either dyed red or yellow, uh, but certainly not, not black. So, so this has probably been dyed yellow and slightly faded. Uh, and also the costume includes kind of raffia leggings, but with the raffia cloak hanging over the top. So there's a raffia uh, uh, kind of shoulder cover which is attached to this mask. There's another raffia which covers the upper body um, and covers most of the, of, of the legs. Generally, these masks appear in pairs. So there are two at the same time and they perform with each other. The earliest photograph we have of such a mask is dates from the second decade of the uh, 20th century. And shows two maskers uh, in the chieftain of Namaka, uh, which is just to the um, southwest of Yile, uh, in the centre of Sierra Leone. Uh, the only place where they are still used, so far as I know now, is in Yile, though these masks are sometimes sent out to neighbouring chieftains to perform. Uh, in ceremonies there. Uh, most of the, the masks and indeed most of the figures that are in museum collections um, from Sierra Leone are either Mende or described as Mende. Um, but this is probably due to the fact that the earliest collections of figures were made in Mende areas and 
there has been a, a tradition, a habit of people then attributing subsequent masks and figures uh, to the Mende. In the case of the Aromatoma, uh, however, this, this didn't happen uh, precisely because the Mende people have nothing like this. This is exclusively a type of mask which is only found among the Timni in the center of Sierra Leone. There are only a few examples of these in museums and in private collections. This one has been in the British Museum since the 1960s but was brought from a dealer in London. I say that this uh, mask is associated with the Rebenli Society. The Rebenli Society is a very ancient society among the Timni and has a wide range of functions, uh, some of which involve uh, ritual purification from pollution of different kinds. Uh, but one of the other uh, occasions when these masks come out is in connection with the installation of chiefs and uh, at a recent installation of a chief in Bonkalenkin chiefdom in January uh, 2010, um, two masks of this type came out and performed. So that's the Aram Atoma mask of, uh, of the Timni people. Now, I want to compare this with a stone carving which displays strange similarities with the form of the Aromatoma. Now, I have no explanation to offer for this and merely put it to you as a puzzle. You see that the shape of the stone carving is very similar to the shape of the Aranatoma. Uh, there is the long spur of the nose coming like so. You have these nostrils, expanded nostrils, and you have the points uh, as in the Aranatoma mask. And below that you have roughly indicated the teeth. So the shape of that stone carving is uncannily similar to the carving of the Aran Atoma mask. Now, why should this be? If this stone carving is genuinely an ancient one, then this would suggest that the form of the Aran Atoma must itself be ancient. So if this is, carving is 500 years old, then this would suggest that masks at least similar to the Aramatoma were being made in Sierra Leone perhaps before the arrival of Europeans. On the other hand, it is just possible that a stone carver carved this strange head in imitation of an Aramatoma mask. But that itself is slightly surprising because one wouldn't expect to find a stone carver uh, anywhere in the area where the Aramatoma masks are danced. A strange feature of this head is this hole which goes round through the centre. Um, it's not clear what that is for, whether it was intended to, for, the, for this stone piece as a whole to be set on a pole, but why that should be is itself rather puzzling. So that's a puzzle in this case. Why there should be uh, uh, a stone carving very much in the, the shape of the Aramnatoma mask. And this is not a unique example because there is in the Sierra Leone Museum itself an example of a stone carving slightly smaller than this but which repeats these features of the Aramnatoma mask. <laughs>